Hey family, welcome to a surprise episode of the Beacon of Truth podcast hosted by yours truly, Miss Erin Bull. So um, I really didn't have any plans on doing a video prior to my usual Saturday sit down. However, this is a special occasion, okay, because I need to get somebody together real quick. Um, I thought about doing it live, but uh, I wanted it to be specific. So I'm going to do it pre-recorded. But nevertheless, y'all, so let me tell you what happened to me. This is about Facebook. Y'all know anybody that knows me in real life, I don't do a whole lot of drama. I'm very low key. You know, I, I don't engage in a lot of things. But one thing, um, this is called The Beacon of Truth. That's the name of my podcast. That's what I host is The Beacon of Truth podcast. So bare minimum, it should be understood that I stand for truth. So let's talk about it, y'all. Let me tell you what happened. Okay. So one of my classmates, you can call her my classmates, but she was actually like in my brother's grade. But anyway, she shared this post, right? This says the Tuskegee experiment was also conducted by the CDC. Let that sink in. So let's just pause and digest that. What is this post about? Is this a post about raising awareness about the Tuskegee experiment? Or is this a post used to exploit the Tuskegee experiment to support your position for not being vaccinated. Yeah, y'all, y'all put that in your pipe and smoke it. So here goes me being me. My initial response was, you know, the Tuskegee experiment was in 1932. The CDC was founded in 1946, but okay. And this is also part of the critical race theory you don't want taught in classrooms, but okay carry on. Now, initially, I had no intentions of really thinking that I was engaging in serious debate. You know, I just saw an inaccurate post and responded to it. But no, that wasn't good enough. So let's get into the comments and reactions. Like, first of all, y'all know it's about to go left when somebody shared this. Okay. And to be clear, uh, she is white. Okay. Now, so here she go, giving me a history lesson of my people. But um, it didn't end until 1972. And have you ever not, I mean, have you ever heard the saying history or his story? The experiment was done specifically on African-Americans. Just like today, they help with population, population control of African-Americans by millions of them being aborted every year. Sorry, I'm not a lover of the government and I don't believe everything they say. And I do not believe everything they put on television. So I'm just going to pause right there real quick, right? Let me just remove this and I'm going to bring it back. At what point did I mention anything about the government or anything I saw on TV or, or whatever? I saw an inaccurate post and offered a correction. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. But okay, you want to come for me? All right. Unless I don't know what that y'all help me. What what is this gif about? Like, cause to me it looks offensive, but all right. Ignore that. And then here's my simple response. Number one, of course I know about this. Um, and number two, don't speak on it just because it supports your position. Keep that same energy and speak in truth to power at all times. Don't pretend like you're concerned about what has happened and is still happening in the black community. This is about your choice not to take the COVID-19 vaccine, not at all about the unfair treatment of African-Americans in this country. You only share this port, this post, excuse me, to garner support for your position. All right. Now, I didn't say anything wrong. Matter of fact, y'all tell me, what, what did I say wrong here? Where did I get offensive? All right, so let me show the whole thing. Here we go. And I'm going to read this because it's long-winded. I know, yeah, I probably want to read it, so I'm going to read it. Please don't come at me like that. You don't even know me. I have shared something about this years and years ago before COVID was even a thing. I care about all people, no matter what their nationality is. And here we go. <laughs> I have black friends. I have black cousins. I have black nephews and nieces who I love very much. I'm not for racism in any shape or for shape or form. I guess it's supposed to be in any shape or form. 
And I do care about what has happened to human beings in the past. You're coming at me like you're not concerned about it. We are all children of God and he has made us all the same, except for different shades of color and different sizes. How boring would it be if he made us all the same? And another thing is that I've been against vaccinations ever since my nephew, who was African-American, was given a shot and suddenly acted like a baby when he was 18 months and could say over 100 words. He suddenly got autism, and that was 16 years ago. Did you know that the number one gender and race who gets autism is African-American boys? I'd really appreciate it if you don't come at me again acting like I don't care about African-Americans, whether it be pre past, present, or future. <sighs> and please do your own research. Look at the facts. You cannot just believe everything that the television says and everything that the government is telling you they are not for you they are against you i hope you can open your mind and do a little research and understand where i'm coming from now let's pause on that y'all okay ma'am ma'am okay wait no i'm not i'm gonna keep going i'm gonna keep going no i'm not okay so first of all you're telling me not to believe everything that's on TV and everything that the government is telling you when nothing that I have stated came from TV or what the government has told me. But okay. Now, I proceed with my position, I guess. I totally respect your decision about the COVID-19 vaccine, your choice, and I'm not speaking for or against the government. I'm black, if you haven't noticed, and you're preaching to the choir on a lot of what you said. All I'm saying is keep that same energy when speaking truth to power. Be sure to talk about the Mississippi appendectomy too. And then I included a link to an episode that I did on my no longer existent um, audio podcast called the U.S. Healthcare Owes Us an Apology, which is where I did an episode about the research <laughs> that I've already done about the uh, misdiagnosis and just abuse and um mistreatment of African-Americans by or in the U.S. healthcare system. So, okay, we make peace, you know, and she just goes on to me. She would never be uh, for any type of racism when it comes to people. And then she tells some Bible story. Uh, okay, cool. And I left it alone, right? So I'm gonna get to this last comment later, but let me show you this other one because here comes the husband. Um, Let me read this. So first of all, he says, so my wife shares the fact that the U.S. government has long been in the practice of medical experimentation on human beings. And instead of acknowledging this, you invoke your skin tone. <coughs> my skin tone. OK, right. You think this somehow makes you more knowledgeable on the subject. Obviously not, because your weak attempt to shut her down failed miserably. Ironically, it's you as it, who has exposed yourself. Racism rears its ugly head in many ways. Sometimes it's one person telling another that they aren't allowed to speak on a subject because of their ethnicity. Get it? Now, if you trust the same government that has dedicated so much time, money, and energy into your destruction to take care of you with free medicine, when diabetes will kill far more Black people this year than COVID, yet they're not giving you that medicine for free, then take your shot and keep it moving. But never, and I mean never, try to tell people how to feel, think, or speak. The best advice I can give you is to start to look at the world and all things going on in it objectively. When you view your issue through the lens of Afrocentricity, you limit yourself. Y'all, let me just pause right there. Let me take this down so it's all on me. Oh, I forgot to add it back. Sorry. So, yeah, I probably saw me making all those faces. Oops. But nevertheless, so I'm going to get back to it. All right. I'll, okay, so it's back on me. Let me go back to it, and I'm going to put it on the stream this time so y'all can see it. All right. Now, you know, they keep talking to me about the government and this, that, the third, or whatever. And two things I have not stated at any point in this argument. Number one, um, that I believe you should be vaccinated, that I believe you should not be vaccinated, that the government wouldn't lie, or that the experiment didn't happen or anything like that. So I haven't argued against any of the facts in here, right? And I haven't even really stated a position for or against the vaccine, but they assume one. Now, let's keep it moving. All right. So that was his response, you know, and I'm like, first of all, sir, why are you here? This is a conversation between two women. And although it's lengthy, for the most part, it's respectful. Nobody is calling um, the other out of their name. 
of course, you know, Tony is up in arms and, oh, I'm not a racist. I'm not a racist. I never called you one. Never. Not one time. But okay. Now, once again, I had to reiterate some things that I had already said. Number one, I responded to the inaccuracy of the statement and offered a correction. After a discussion, I said what I said. Um, I didn't call her a racist or tell her what to say, think, or speak. She chooses not to be vaccinated. Okay. Her decision. I only said don't speak on the exploitation when it benefits your argument, meaning hers. I didn't tell her don't speak on anything. In fact, I said speak on it at all times, not just when it supports your position. Also, I didn't invoke my skin tone. I invoked my ethnicity. And the U.S. government experimented on a group that were considered to be less than human. They were just considered to be animals with human-like qualities. I brought up the fact that I'm black because, one, she already knows this. We went to school together. And, two, I said, I'm black. You're preaching to the choir, meaning I'm already informed on the things that she was speaking of, which I also stated. I stand on everything I said to her and take no issue with what she has said to me. Know how you feel about it is your business. Take care. Now, here he comes. Husband to the rescue. Not at all, but get chopped up. The statement was not inaccurate. The CDC facilitated those experiments. You're on the internet. A quick search will tell you this. Also, it wouldn't matter if they didn't come up with the three letters CDC until a certain date because it's still the U.S. government experimenting on people. Your straw man is of no use. Let's just pause on that. All right, so I'm going to go back. The statement was not inaccurate. However, and you're saying that the CDC facilitated those experiments. How can they see, How can the CDC facilitate? facilitate an experiment that happened before them. All right. Then he says, oh, it wouldn't matter if they didn't come up with the three letters um, until a certain date because it's still the U.S. government. Okay. Then it was the U.S. government standalone. That's it. It's not an argument against the Tuskegee experiment. It's not saying that, oh, it wasn't them or anything about being pro-government or whatever. Okay. Let's continue. So then he says, the fact that you think it's logical to bring up your skin tone slash ethnicity because Paul's, he know he was dead wrong to say skin tone because my skin tone is brown, but okay. Um, Your skin tone or ethnicity at all shows a lot about your character. You would not say these things to a black person. Mm, Yeah, I would, but okay. This makes you a racist. I checked out your page. I see what you're about. Um, if you checked out my page, then you would know that I love my fiance. I love football. I love my family. And also I love my black people, but I also love all people. Um, you would see no hate. You would see no division and not a whole lot of controversy on there unless you want to talk about sugar and spaghetti or something like that. But other than that, mm, you must have not checked out my page, but then too. The point that my wife made, which stepped on your toes and you seem so desperate to avoid at all costs is this. It's a damn shame to see black folks get in line to get another shot as if you haven't learned a damn thing from history. Well, first of all, country boy, um, don't talk to me like that. Okay. And then number two, I didn't encourage anybody to get the shot. I didn't encourage anybody not to get the shot either. All I did was come to an inaccurate post and give facts. But okay. And. Once again, here we go. This is my final response, y'all, and I'm going to get out of here. But I never even stated my position on the vaccine one way or another. My point was never to debate to vax or not. That like, That's a personal decision. I stayed away from it, period. But again, how you feel about it is your business. You're totally extrapolating things I didn't say or imply. It was a discussion, period. She said what she said. I said what I said, and we're good on it. And racist? Okay, have a good day or have your opinion. And while you're at it, have a good day. The end, y'all. Let me stop this. But um, yeah, so that was my adventure in like racist land or something. I don't know. Um, I don't know that I've ever been called racist. Hmm. It's interesting. And I was told that I was racist because I said that I'm black to a white person. So apparently I can only be black to black people. 
Because if I tell black uh, white people that I'm black, I'm racist. Y'all let me know y'all thoughts in the comments. I don't know. This was a hot mess, y'all. This was uh, a hot mess. But nevertheless, y'all, as always, thank you so much for your support. And thank you for watching.